Hey folks, I'm Alex and you're on the Nobby Brick channel. Today we're going to take a look into this LEGO set number 42121, Heavy Duty Excavator. And this is a 2-in-1 set. You know when the set is 2-in-1 or 3-in-1, there is always a primary model, the main one, which you can usually see on the front side of the box. But also, there is a secondary model, which is not always visible right away, but rather shown on the back side, like here. And that particular thing actually made a trick on me with the decision around buying this set. Let's dive into it and I will explain what I mean. So the set contains 569 pieces. It's far from being new, released more than a year and a half ago in March 2021. The Model B was the reason why I decided to buy this set and build it for my collection. Inside the box we have four medium-sized plastic bags with Technic pieces and two separate small bags with a lot of black link threads. There are actually 45 of those in each bag. Obviously they are going to be used to assemble excavated tracks. Also we have a book with building instructions and a sheet of stickers. Stickers are numbered from 1 to 11, in total there are 13 of them. Almost all except for the 1x2 control panel have a yellow background. Speaking about the book with instructions, it's not too thick and contains 114 pages. As it often happens for the 2-in-1 sets, the included book is only for the primary excavator model itself. If you want to build an alternative model, you'll need to download another book from the LEGO site or the LEGO building app on your phone. The downloaded book for the tractor contains 126 pages. Instructions are traditionally clear and easy to follow. At the end of each book there is a page with a short graphical description of main functions for the respective model. And here is the list of the parts. A couple of words about pieces. That's a true Technic set, so you'll find just a few regular pieces, curved slopes and tiles here. And the absolute majority of pieces are beams, pins, gears and axles. When I asked myself about what special or rare pieces we have in this set, the first one that I actually checked was this turntable with 60 teeth but both top and base parts of it are widely used across other different sets. And I was really surprised to find out that the one piece that is not really popular and not commonly used is this digger bucket itself. According to Brickling, it appears in only two sets. This one and the huge 4000 piece bucket wheel excavator retired in 2018. It had eight of these bucket pieces but in yellow color. And that's it. So that one piece in dark bluish gray is actually unique to this set. Fascinating, I would never think of it as a rare piece. The building process is split into four stages. The most fun ones, in my opinion, are the first and the third. We start building the set with the assembling of probably the most exciting component, the front part of the excavator. Here we put together three sections of it, the boom, the arm and the digger bucket. As you can see, all three cylinders that would be parts of a real excavator hydraulic system are represented here by two liner actuator pieces and an axle. In this review I will be still calling them cylinders, as it's just more convenient. They obviously are not working the same way as in real life, but they create the same straight line motion that allows to control the boom independently from the arm and the bucket. Later in the first stage we also build a central part of the excavator body and connect both components together. By doing that we create something like a drive shaft that will allow us later to control the front part of the excavator with a knob located on the back side of its body. During the third stage we are building the bottom part of the excavator and the carriage. Basically we are assembling two tracks with all the supporting cogwheels and sprockets. Even though some people may find the assembling tracks to be a tedious process, because each track consists of 43 of these small links that you need to connect to each other, I found it fascinating and very satisfying. Especially when it's complete and you put the track around the base and everything just clicks. Here we also install the turntable that allows our excavator to turn its body separately from the undercarriage, 360 degrees in any direction. The second and the fourth stages are where you're mostly working on the body itself, applying stickers, building a counterweight and adding small details. The final result looks awesome. Now let's see how the boom, the arm and the bucket work together. The boom cylinder is controlled by the knob on the back side of the body. The range of motion is good, but it takes some time to lower the boom down from the topmost to the lowest possible position. The model is not motorized, so this is the way to do it. The arm and the bucket cylinders are controlled by a single knob on the right side of the body. They cannot be manipulated independently. So the functioning of both at the same time 
is the result of how all the related beams and lift arms are connected to each other. But nevertheless, let's actually check how far and deep the excavator can extend its backhoe. By the way, when you build the excavator, these 20 dark bluish gray 1x2 Technic pieces remain unused. Be aware that you don't have them available if you build the alternative tractor model. For the Model B, they are used as parts of the body. Anyway, I would say these pieces are too big for a bucket and there are too few of them to demonstrate how the excavator works. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use these smaller 1x1 wedge pieces which are obviously not included into this set. So as you can see, the boom and the arm can be extended pretty far away from the body and reach some depth as well. Nice! Although you need some practice before it starts working for you smoothly. I really like that the front attachment is actually functional like a real one and you can play with it. Another function that helps to move the soil out of the trench is the excavator body rotation. It spins freely 360 degrees in any direction. Let's talk about tracks for a moment. Tracks are built independently and they can be moved independently. As I mentioned, each track consists of 43 small pieces that look like they can break easily. But the complete tread caterpillar feels strong and sturdy enough. I didn't have any issues with them falling apart or sliding off their sprockets and cogs. And I'm just gonna stop talking for a moment. Listen to the sound. Yes, it's plasticky, but the pattern of the noise they produce is very natural. Awesome! A couple of words about the cabin. I don't know why, but I was hoping to see a proper seat for a minifigure inside. But it's a Technic set, so it would be very unusual if we got one here. The only interesting piece in the cabin is this control panel made with the sticker. And the last two features that I want to mention is this small amber beacon light that is placed right above the cabin. And we also have two small spotlights here attached to the boom. Small details, but they add some realism to the model. Before I move on to the secondary model, I just want to ask you to hit the like button if this video has been informative and or entertaining to you. That helps this channel to grow. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, let's not forget that we also have a tractor to review. So the building process for the tractor is completely different. And by the way, it doesn't have stages. So if you want to build the tractor first, I think you'll need to open all the bags at once. Then go building the model from the bottom up, starting with its frame. And the frame is articulated. Remember that 60T turntable that was used to rotate the upper structure of the excavator? Here it's used to create this articulation point. The backhoe uses both cylinders as well, but the boom and the arm are much shorter than for the excavator. Also, there is no complicated system of shafts and gears to manipulate them. Both black knobs are almost directly attached to the actuators. That makes the backside of the tractor simpler, but at the same time stronger. The body uses the same yellow panels and beams with already applied stickers. You just need to make sure that you put the right piece with the right sticker to its designated place. If we talk about tracks, then here instead of two large and long ones, we have four. So for the two tracks on either left or right side, we use the same number of links as for a single excavator track. 21 and 22 links, but still 43 in total. The rear tracks are independent but the front ones are connected to each other. There are two front axles that don't allow them to work independently. But that is done so to add one feature to this tractor which is not there in excavator. I'll get to it in a moment. The whole yellow front part of the machine is actually a hood that can be opened. And under it you'll find an engine. See these four short axles with four yellow bushes on top of them? Those act like engine pistons. And when the front tracks are moving, the connected axles make a little crankshaft spin. The knuckles on the crankshaft push the pistons and we can see them popping up and down here when the hood is opened. Of course, that's a very simplified version of the engine, but it's a nice feature. And it was very fun to build. A few other small features include the thick black exhaust pipe, the headlights, the amber beacon light and the small control panel here on the right side of the cabin. Not sure why this panel is here, but I'll take it. Overall, I have to say I like both the excavator and the tractor. I bought this set because of the Model B, and for me the tractor was actually more fun to build. I think mostly because of the tracks, I enjoy their design, and this engine-like mechanism under the hood. But I have to admit that I find the excavator to be more pleasant to look and to play with. 
the model feels better designed and more realistic. And that's all I have to say about this set. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, bye bye.